Right, hello and welcome to another Expert Insight interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM, joining you as usual from sunny San Diego. And today I'm joined by Dr. Stephen Petteruti, who is in Rhode Island. How are you doing, Dr. Steve? Excellent, John. Thanks for having me on your show. Absolutely. And, um, and, uh, Dr. Steve is, uh, is the founder of Functional Medicine, and he's a family physician, research and development speaker, author of The Cancer Machine. And what I like here is um, what you say in your, in your bio here is about your passion for patient care. Patients tell us what they need, and what they need is to feel better, live longer, and live better. That's the passion that drives my practice. And what we're going to talk about today is, get this right, the science of anti-aging how to live to be 120. So, okay, if you're coming up on your 100th birthday, we're going to tell you how to, uh, you know, grab another 20 years. <laughs> so anyway, anyway, Dr. Dr. Steve, um, first of all, tell us about when people hear like science of anti-aging, right? The first thing that probably springs to most people's uh, mind is expensive cosmetics and expensive, you know, cosmetic surgery, if you like. Yep, uh, I would agree. You know, John, when I first became interested in this field, I was uh, 48 and I was starting to experience the effects of aging myself. I'm a board certified family doctor, so I come out of traditional medicine, but I recognize that we're not addressing the biggest risk factor that compromises our health and vitality. That's aging itself. And the science to modify that is available. It's just not part of medicine. But I was also aware, as you stated, that there was a, a perception of this as being almost frivolous, almost mm -hmm. purely aesthetic, um, almost a little bit um, marketing, you know, pizzazz. So I waded into the field and I found both elements. Yeah, there's a lot of marketing pizzazz and your listeners need to be cautious about following the breadcrumbs into a black hole of false hope. On the flip side, the science is real, it's being pushed forward rapidly and it's happening in our lifetime. So I have embraced this concept that it's much like other endeavors. The first thing we need to do is set the objective mm -hmm. rather than accept the status quo. The objective, okay, living to 120 is cool and mm -hmm. it's my intention to pursue that. What my patients tell me to a person, what your listeners are likely thinking is, oh my God, all that time spent being old? Absolutely yeah. not, right? What you want to do is age chronologically, but not physiologically. You want to die young at an advanced age. Right. So the science is there and the challenge is knowing what to apply and when. So that's one of the things uh, intellectual medicine helps guide people towards. Right. And, and and it's great. Thank you for that explanation, because, yeah, I think a lot of people have heard of the anti-aging serums and all of that kind of stuff and um, yep. seen that expensive bottles and those um, spa treatments and all of that. But what you're talking about here is um, so. So let's get a bit deeper. So what you're talking about here is really taking, you know, taking care of the, the whole body. Right. Absolutely. You know, the anti-aging that I, I so I do bioidentical hormone replacement. It is an element of anti-aging, but having six pack abs isn't going to guarantee you that you full 120 years. You know, we know that athletes burn out fast and mm -hmm. there's a difference between fitness and athleticism and longevity. So yeah, you got to be healthy from the inside out and the whole thing matters. So I have a, a book that'll be published within the next six months called the anti-aging pyramid. And it describes what should you do and when should you do it? For instance, John, I have a people will come to me and say, you know, I want to go on growth hormone because I've heard it's anti-aging. <laughs> well, it depends on how old you are and whether or not your body needs it. You start uh, growth hormone at a young age and it can accelerate the aging process, cost you a lot of money and do medical harm. So that's one of the things that I focus people on. You know, the cost is a factor. So yep. everybody, in my opinion, every human being should be doing some form of anti-aging. And then you need to figure out what fits your lifestyle, your budget, uh, and then what is going to give you the biggest value. So that foundational tier in the pyramid, it's all the stuff that we know about, right? Don't smoke, stay socially active, be physically engaged. And then the next tier is control percent body fat. 
as a board certified specialist in obesity medicine, we've woven that into intellectual medicine, made it part of the goal. Then comes hormonal replacement. Every human being needs to replace their hormones that they are losing from the gonads, ovaries for women, mm -hmm. uh, the testicles for men, or they're going to suffer negative consequence. And that's not a maybe, that's a, a guarantee. So you got to replace hormones or you're going to wither. And then comes detoxification, heavy right. metals in particular, lead and cadmium that we accumulate over the span of lifetime. We've got a thousand times the amount of lead in our bodies as is natural for a human to have. And that's just unavoidable for manufacturing. Then right. you get into the super cool stuff, the cellular stuff that, um, that takes you beyond that. So can you live to 120? I believe you can. I, not only do I believe it, but it's happened. Will it become a standard and a routine? I think it will within our lifetime. And I do believe that we're about to see quantum leaps where folks are going to go to 150 um, wow. as they get Nobel Prize level breakthroughs in anti-aging. But you so, only get there, John, if, if you're healthy to begin with. Yeah, no, exactly. So um, do, do people ever say to you, Dr. Steve, like, well, why would I want to live to 120 or 150? Um, yeah. It's a great know. question. I mean, you don't want to be on an island, right? So yeah. in my practice at intellectual medicine, I have a lot of couples and what they are having is a lot of fun. You know, when your body gives you pleasure, when you can walk, run, when you can smile and laugh, when you can partake of the lives of people you love, when you have the gift of time, that's what it's about. And you maintain your mental acuity, your, your physical strength and your sexual vitality. Mm -hmm. It is not a withered time of rocking chairs in misery if properly managed. And you know, we, we talk a lot about wealth accumulation and the ability to accumulate wealth through an extended lifespan, accumulate yeah. wisdom. Uh, it's going to be uh, really a, a social challenge for the, for the world at large, because I like to describe the people in intellectual medicine as patient zero. And it's a term that we use in medicine for an individual facing a fatal condition, yeah. experimenting with a new intervention, a new treatment, right? So the fatal condition in this case is aging, yeah. and patient zero are the folks that are actively doing anti-aging. Uh, you're going to see them separate out. They're going to just look and behave differently. Yeah, and it's interesting if you think about it, right? So we work, we we try to make money and you know save for retirement and everything, and, and all of that. And then obviously, when you reach that point, hopefully of retirement, um, it's not very enjoyable if you're pretty like you know if you're knackered at that stage, right? <laughs> if you're if if you're worn out, your body's worn out, and all of that. To your point, um, you're not really going to enjoy what you have earned. That's well said. Well said. The um, so I've had the privilege of being in medicine for over thirty years. I'm I'm now sixty two. I've been doing my own anti aging regimen through well since age forty eight. What people desire and what they really fear is they desire independence and they fear mm -hmm. losing their independence, the ability to drive, the ability to get out of a chair and walk, the ability to be in charge of their own affairs and have their brain intact. But one of the big problems with conventional medicine is the um, reaction to an acute event that takes decades to occur, the precursor to heart disease, cancer, and dementia takes decades of corrosion. And they wait and they wait and they wait because there really is no intervention that is part of standard medicine that'll prevent these conditions. And consequently, it's, a, you know, it's up to us, John, it's up to you and I to look at the evidence. And this is a beautiful part about your show, the opportunity to talk to your audience and the ability for the audience to go to intellectual medicine, other resources, you know, be skeptical ask questions and don't trust one source of information, uh, even if it comes from me, although you can trust me, but that, you know, you want to be generically uh, inquisitive. So, yeah. so that type of curiosity drives it. And then people find their path toward their, their anti-aging that fits their age and their life. Yeah. Well, let's, um, I mean, let's face it, Dr. Steve. I mean, most people's experience with, with medicine and with doctors, as you said, is a reactive one, right? You, you go to the doctor when there's something wrong, your back pain becomes unbearable. You eventually go to the doctor and, you know, he, he orders an MRI and all of that and says, yeah, yeah, you know, you've got 
disc problems or whatever it is. But to your right. point, it's all it's all it's all reactive, and and rarely do they. I mean, yes, most doctors will give you advice. Like, you know, you eat well and be right. healthy and all of that. You know, fitness and that kind of stuff. But beyond that, they don't really give you any advice. No, and we have to uh, give them their due, correct? So yeah. that advice has been the same since like 1980. You know, the science mm -hmm. has leapfrogged over that. Um, so a few things have happened in medicine that your listeners probably aren't fully aware of. One, it's become a vertically integrated corporation. Your primary care doctor is no longer working for you unless it's a concierge doctor and you're paying them directly or her directly. They're accountable for that corporation. You know, when I started in medicine, I was like, a, I was a free agent. The insurance yeah. companies, the hospitals, nobody could tell me what to do. I loved it. They hated it, you know, <laughs> because primary care drives expense. We order studies. We also, in the corporate medicine calls it controlling lives. We direct where people go for their mammograms. That's profitable. For colonoscopes, that's profitable. Mm. Hospitals do not make money on healthy people. They don't make money unless their beds are full. Surgeons don't operate on healthy people. There are times when we are very grateful for their services when we need them. But this idea of being proactive with our health, that's our responsibility. And the FDA does not approve drugs to keep you healthy. They're drugs to intervene in disease states. So the bulk of what I do is driven by science and by primary research, intravenous vitamin C, intravenous chelation therapy to help control the progress of heart disease and prevent the buildup of lead, which is a pure toxin. These are steps that I think everybody should be aware of and consider making part of their life routine. Uh, kind of the way you, you know, go get your hair cut or you, you, know, you get your, your, your nails done or other life routines or go to the gym. And this should be right in there with it. So, so um, Dr. Steve, so if people are listening to this and they think, well, this sounds interesting, but it sounds like it's probably really, really expensive and maybe out of my financial reach. Yep. Well, there's a, uh, I would say the um, average American can afford the core elements of anti-aging. You know, what's happened to anti-aging is that it's becoming more available, more common, and like any business endeavor, there's a little bit of price competition, and that's a good thing. You will not find this in your insurance reimbursed world, ladies and gentlemen, so mm -hmm. please don't even try. <laughs> Go to your doctor and say, hey, I want to do... Well, here's an example. We did a study at our center of intravenous chelation, and this is an intravenous treatment consisting of vitamins, vitamin C and others, as well as calcium EDTA, which pulls out lead, which is a neurotoxin and a cardiotoxin, and it pulls cadmium out, which is carcinogenic. We did a series of 14 treatments on average with a 39% reduction in total body lead. That treatment spanned about 18 to 24 months, an average of one to two per month. It cost just about $200 per infusion. Now, 200 bucks every one or two months uh, to add into your sort of health equation, that's pretty affordable for the majority of people if they understand its merit and they value it, right? So some of how we spend our money, our discretionary income is very much driven by our own philosophy. If you're a fatalist and you don't believe in any, bio, in any intervention that can help aging, keep your money in your pocket and rock on, right? Mm -hmm. You'd be wrong to deny the science, it's real. Um, but that's an example. How about hormone therapy? Once again, we are not talking about uh, the commercial branded hormones, those right. are not so helpful. The hormone that I have most of the women on in my practice is testosterone. They need it desperately. When the brain starts to weaken, libido fades, muscles sag, uh, typically around the late 40s. And I believe that women starting at age, or no later than age 50, and men no later than age 60 should be on hormones to prevent mm -hmm. decay. Um, you're looking at, I would say for hormone therapy, infusion-based therapy, you're in the range of a couple thousand a year, depending on where you're going to get these services. Um, right. So it's not free, but here's a good example I think about often. When I was a kid, television was nothing. You bought a TV, mm -hmm. you plugged it in and away you went. Now I've got a household budget of three, 400 bucks. 
just to turn on a TV, I can't even operate. Right? <laughs> and what has changed is my values and my perception. This is something brand new, you know? Yeah. It's, it's harder now because we do have these choices. If you're listening to this and you're anywhere from age really 30 on up, you're starting to contemplate, do I want to get on this bus? And if I don't, will I regret it later when, you know, things come my way that I'm not pleased about? Um, that's a personal decision. It's based mm -hmm. in philosophy and, and, and the science, right? So yeah. everybody can do anti-aging. I just... I like to help guide them towards applying it to that which helps the most. Now we mentioned growth hormone. Yeah. I've seen first people, please stop already with this buying the crap online and having a mail to home <laughs> in little vials. Are you out of your <laughs> mind? I have people come to me with a vial unlabeled. The guy's injecting himself saying, yeah, this is my growth hormone. And first yeah. he's in his forties. So it's bad out of the box, but then you're, you're, you know, blindly, grabbing what the cheapest thing that's nuts mm -hmm. yeah so, and and let's face it we're getting bombarded with that stuff now i mean with all because obviously the target marketing is so yeah it's so advanced now that they can you know get to the right audience but yeah we're we're bombarded with um hormone pills and you know get your testosterone pill get your monthly supply for 20 bucks or whatever yeah well it's a good point so here are things to avoid multi-level marketing it is um, not a good source for anything because they're too proprietary. If you're looking at a website and the website is dedicated to a singular supplement, be cautious. And if that singular supplement is so broad in its appeal that it seems to be addressing everything, it's probably overstated. Um, so you, you're, you're right, John, the uh, buyer beware in this arena. There is good information out there and it's you can find it. In fact, nowadays, they can go to PubMed, which is the resource I use to look at medical articles. And if, you're, if your listeners have that inclination, they can Google uh, growth hormone and they can read medical articles. Um, our website, and I've got a, a, a podcast I do periodically where they're strictly informational, um, where we're trying to guide people from really all over the world, because this is a kind of a universal pursuit, right? Everybody... Yeah wants to live, everybody wants another year. So people say, I don't know if I want it to be a hundred. Well, I have a gentleman in my practice who's 98, enjoying life very much. And you ask him if he wants to be 99, he says, hell yeah. Yeah, yeah I, think that, I think that's a great point. And I think, uh, I think it's, it's a great advice for people to do their research because uh, just thinking there, I was watching, I was watching an old Western the other night and it, it reminds me of, you know, those guys who used to go around with their tonics or, you know, selling them yeah. like they were good for everything. You know, it was like everything from, you know, from, uh, you know, coals and everything to getting stains out. Yep, absolutely. So the snake oil label has been applied to those of us in anti-aging field. Uh, when a doctor rejects anti-aging as puffery and snake oil, they're exposing their lack of intellectual curiosity and knowledge. It's substantive. When a doctor says chelation is a waste of time and money, they're ignoring the studies that have been done and published in major medical journals showing reductions in heart attacks, strokes, stenting. Let's focus on heart disease for a moment. It's mm -hmm. still the number one killer. Yep. It starts in your 20s. So you have that, that heart attack when you're 55. You were laying the foundation of that disease 30 years prior. And cholesterol drugs are not a universal elixir of health. Same thing with dementia. You know, there's a, a new drug got approved for dementia. It's a horrible drug with toxic side effects and no value. And yet it'll be a billion dollar blockbuster because people are desperate. Right. Dementia starts when, the, when you forget your car keys, that began 20 years before. That's where we target intellectual medicine. That's where we target cellular support. So- um and I think that's a great point and a, and a great one to underline for everybody here, because what you're saying exactly is you're going back and starting, you're, go, you're starting the treatments when they should start as opposed to, you know, the reactive treatment later. I mean, taking the, you know, when you're, when you're older and maybe you have early onset of dementia, yeah, it might be great, great to have these, great to have these new medicines, but obviously, as you said, it would be far better for you to have treated this, uh, proactively in advance. 
Yep. Look, nobody ever drugged their way to good health, right? That does not occur. And you were talking about retirement earlier. Nobody ever said, man, I can't wait for my retirement so I can have my heart failure treated, get my hip replaced and go to rehab, right? That, so we, we know if you save money when you're 30, you're going to be well off when you're 60. The same correlation applies to your health. You invest in it when you're vital and you don't wait for things to fall apart. Here's a great example of the type of patient I see. Um, typically, a woman in her like late 40s starts to get tired, starts to right. lose interest in sex, maybe gains a few pounds, isn't sleeping so great, um, is a little more moody than usual, goes to the average doctor who says, by golly, you must be depressed. I'm going to put you on some Prozac or fill in the blank antidepressant. Mm -hmm. Those drugs cause weight gain and libido dysfunction. So you just took this poor woman who's really suffering a lack of hormones and gave her a drug that's going to make her heavy and not interested in sex. Do you think you did her a favor? This mm -hmm. is an example of symptom complexes that are a consequence of aging and not really a disease state where we need to put back in the body what it's missing. And when you do that, it's like watering a flower. It's wonderful to see these patients kind of pop back to life and stay that way. Yeah, because unfortunately, in in that example that you use there, yeah, what you've done then is you've, as you said, I mean, you haven't really helped the person, but you've also made them feel worse about themselves, and uh, and it's a spiral, really. I mean, that that's a that's an awful situation to be in because it's not because going on the antidepressants isn't going to help you with energy or anything like that. That's for sure. Right, and if if you know the the brain is an organic substance. And testosterone, among the other hormones, are neurotransmitters. People don't appreciate that they operate in the brain in a very significant manner, enhancing confidence. They make us more tempered in the face of irritable uh, stimuli, less cranky. Um, they clearly correlate with sex function, which in our practice, we take as a vital sign. It's an element of what people choose to do it is their prerogative. Mm -hmm. But there's no point in life where you should have to surrender that activity for want of capability. There's always a treatment. So people then say to me, well, doc, you know, how long should I stay on this hormone therapy? And my answer is till they close the lid. Said, <laughs> <laughs> Why would uh, no, yeah, no, exactly. I mean, if it's working. Well, listen, then, Dr. Steve, this, is, this has been fascinating. Um, all of Dr. Steve's information is going to be below this video. But before we go, please do tell people a little bit more about you and your practice. Sure. Intellectual Medicine is based in Rhode Island, where my wife, Shannon, and I have created the center where we address hormonal needs. We address cellular-based anti-aging needs. We do a wide array of infusions. We mentioned chelation a few times. We also do intravenous vitamin C to help support people fighting cancer, among other maladies. So bypassing the gut and going direct with infused vitamins can be helpful. We do have um, uh, virtual services available that we can counsel patients on. And really, we, um, you know, we believe in what we're doing, John. This is life-changing medicine. I feel um, driven to spread this word and to you know, get this uh, message out to folks. We, uh, we launched a business called Drip Bar, which are mm -hmm. IV infusion centers, and they are franchised and opening up all over the country where patients can receive chelation therapy, vitamin infusions. An important element of the anti-aging anti can be delivered there. And you know, Shannon and I were the... Um, uh, initiators in, in that business endeavor, and we've partnered with others to make it a reality. So listen, anti-aging therapies are going to come from the grassroots. They're not going to come from the halls of traditional medicine. It's a new thing that is really springing up and, you know, we aim to serve it in that space. So come yeah. to Rhode Island, people will take good care of you. Yeah, listen, it sounds fantastic. I would encourage people to, to check it out and do your research. Uh, this is fascinating stuff. And maybe, uh, Dr. Steve will come back in 60 years and we'll pick up this conversation uh, again, right? Absolutely. <laughs> we'll both still be here, John. It'll be great yeah, talk. Exactly. Well, listen, this has been fantastic. Thanks again, Dr. Steve. I think this is fascinating stuff. I really would encourage you to check it out and uh, educate yourself about it and see whether you think it's for you. My name is John Golden, Sales Pop Online Sales Magazine, Pipeliner CRM. Thank you.